here we're looking at a variety of different millet uh, varieties. Uh, and millets really fit into the mix well, particularly when we're looking for wet chop uh, or grazing opportunities. Uh, dry hay with uh, millet can be pretty tough in Minnesota. So I think in a lot of instances, we probably really shouldn't expect to be able to get dry hay out of it. But wet chop and grazing is great. Uh, one of them right here, Proso millet, is a tremendous a forage crop. We don't see it used as a forage crop that often because it's more so uh, used for the grain portion, but once in a while you'll see it used as a forage crop. The most common type of millet that you'll see is a German foxtail millet. Uh, very common because the seed is cheap, it's easy to grow. It will grow in a whole variety of different types of soils, but it is only a one, one and done type deal. So once it's cut or grazed, then it's done for the season. Down here we've got pearl millet, which in some instances is a, is a much more commonly used uh, millet because you can get uh, two to three cuts out of this type of millet uh, without a tremendous amount of effort. Not The fertilizer requirements are very low. The seed of pearl millet is a little more expensive than, say, for example, a German millet. Uh, but again, you're going to get a couple of cuts out of it, so it's probably worth it. Japanese millets tend to work best in different types of mixes. Uh, the forage quantity out of a Japanese millet is quite a bit less than the other varieties that we've looked at, um, but they work really well in mixes. They're really tall and spindly, uh, but they, they do work well for you know, different types of uh, grazing scenarios and then again wet chop. If there's one millet that you might be able to get some dry hay made out of, it would be uh, Japanese millet.